numerous pictures of new items are possessed of such a tiny energy. Massive success accomplishes itself in such a tiny energy growing tinier. What is it that chooses to remain such a tiny energy? Can we even give a name to such a freakish presence? The only time I seem to love the other customers, above all, is when they're eating. <clears throat> I often think about overeating. It's strange that I never do. Each bite of my mustard-only double cheeseburger is so good that I reel in the aftermath. The meaty, the meaty goodness, the meaty goodness obliterates my soul as much as it secures it. I am a bell, incapable of vibration. If I, if I were to ring any more, I don't know if the air would be able to handle it. <laughs> you know, it's amazing how I recognize the parking lot, but I don't recognize the parking lot's power to make customers appear. How is it that this place remains unfulfilled by its sudden natives? And and why these natives and, and not those? And what homeland allows us to arrive so, allows them to arrive so completely oblivious to the constant violence of various similar orders into merely just wanting words? Today I bought a salad just to look at it, smell it, and rub it on my face. Again, I'm feeling like a doctor. But this time the feeling's clearer. I feel like an ancient doctor with ancient ideas on what need be done. I asked the register girl if it'd be possible to have tiny holes drilled into my brain so good, strong coffee could be poured inside it. Feels good to be punched in the face, but only for an instant. This is what I was thinking as I sat in this afternoon's empty dining room. Then my mind wandered. And I imagine Wendy in my car. She said, I'd like you to take your fat tongue and run it from my asshole to my clit over, over again. And I said, baby, I'd like you to punch me in my face. Today, I felt like a cup of soda that had been left sitting full for too long. Watery, sides melting, barely able to be handled, but there, so very, very there. Simply demanding proper disposal. It is my suspicion that, however persuasive that demand, there can be no such thing. I was thinking today of the beatings my mother used to give me. I come to enjoy them early on, willingly, adoringly. I've come to equate pain and extreme pleasure with silence, but not silence. It was awful, like today, here, today. Often on a very hot day, Wendy's is quite cool, almost cold. Uh, notice we take leisurely walks through a raging fire. Having blatant self destruction. Paint the picture. the thought. I need a word. Make it up. Shel that shelter is a newer and deeper pleasure. That uh, pleasure is inadequate. I sort of recognize your employees, but not so much as you think. I believe they recognize me. 
When I think about it, the faces that really stay etched in my mind are the faces of porn stars. Only in porn, it seems, does a face acquire the peculiar glow of its own most rhythmic ambiguity. It's sad to every day come to Wendy's and see faces that will never be given to me in their full porn depth. Today I had a biggie. Most days I just have a small and refill, why pay more? But today I needed a biggie inside of me. Some days are like that, I guess. You just wake up and you know. Today I'm going to have a biggie. I'm going to put it inside of me and I'm going to feel better. One time I saw a guy who had three biggies. One wonders not about him, but what it is in us that holds us back. Your employees are beautiful. They have no authority. Even the managers have no authority. If pushed, they will just call someone else. At Wendy's, we write letters not from authors, but to an author. One who is asleep and will never awaken. You know, I love the cleanliness of Wendy's. It's such a clean that not in any case is a banishing of genitalia, but it's the creation of a quiet, bright mind space that allows the deliciousness of genitalia to become obvious. So I stare at those clean, colorful tables and the pretty food posters, and I think, I like people again. Each has a dick and balls or a cunt and titties, which clean are simply enjoyable. Shall I put my penis on the counter? But what would that really accomplish? Would it change the world? Would it change me? Would it change any of the attendant employees? No, no, and no. But should we judge an activity by whether or not it changes something? That would imply evolution as predetermined and full of a specific purpose. My penis on the counter is resistance. It demonstrates evolution's indeterminate willfulness.